Welcome back to Real Estate Mindset. So today's video, you guys, is obviously my Thursday update on the market. So today we're going to look at the updated interest rates and the updated inventory. And as you guys know, I wait till Thursdays to give my update because I wait for Fred economic data to put out the results. Now, the reason I use Fred is they're a little bit more conservative. And as far as interest rates, it's kind of what I would shop if I was a consumer. That's why I don't use these other websites that show rates possibly a little bit higher. I always wait for Fed economic data because I want someone that is a lot more conservative and a lot more realistic with their numbers. And as always, as you guys know, Fred uses data from Freddie Mac. Okay. So Freddie Mac is obviously a massive, massive entity. So again, I go with them. Now, as always, you guys like this video. If you can subscribe to my channel, if you haven't, and remember, I'm not a financial advisor. Okay. I'm an opinion sharer, realtor in Houston and a loan officer in Texas. I've been doing this a couple decades. I love real estate and I absolutely love educating and empowering people. Okay. So what we're going to get started first right now, you guys, is we're going to take a look at the interest rates. We're going to see how much they surged, if any. So take a look at this graph right now. Okay, guys. So let's see what the new average interest rate is. It is now 5%. Okay. And what I really want you guys to point out, so it went from 4.72 to last Thursday to 5%. That's a, let's see here. That is a 28 basis point increase, you guys. So essentially what that means is another 2.8% of purchasing power in one week is now wiped out. And I want to take you back to this graph right now, just so you guys can take a look at this surge. Now, again, here's pre-pandemic interest rates. We are now over pre-pandemic. Look at this. We're over pre-pandemic. And here's the thing, you guys. I've been telling people we're just going back to pre-pandemic interest rates, but the problem is, is the massive surge. And as you can see here, there was no transition. It was essentially a skyrocketing rug pull type of situation. I think that drastic surge of interest rate is, is essentially it's spelling doom for people. People cannot transition from 3% to 5% virtually overnight without it being extremely uncomfortable. And in fact, a lot of people are now no longer able to qualify for loans. So what I also want you guys to understand is this is saying 5%. Odds are, if you have any type of challenge in your situation for financing, odds are your rate is going to be higher. I think that it's referring to 5% as like the top tier average interest rate, because I have personally been seeing rates right now, 5.5%, 5.37, 5.75 at a cost, right? So rates are all, all, all over the place right now. And as you guys know, I have been anticipating rates to hit 5% during spring and summer and towards the end of the year, 6%. I don't know that they would get to 7% or anything above 7%. The, the reason I don't think that is actually possible, house prices are too much. House prices haven't even gone down yet. If house prices start going down, then I believe 7% is possible. But house prices, the way they are right now, I very much so doubt we'll ever hit 7%. But let's keep an eye on that, okay? So the problem is surging interest rates. The question is, are the surging interest rates now cooling down the housing market enough to bring inventory back onto the market? So we're going to look at another graph right now of the U.S. inventory. And then I'm also going to show you guys an MLS, the access to my own personal MLS. And we're going to look at houses around my local area so that I can show you whether or not interest rates have cooled down my area. OK, but first, let's take a look at the inventory, the active inventory right now from Fred. Okay, guys. So as you can see here, active inventory is now 381,950 and that is up. So inventory has gone up from February to March, but as you can see, it hasn't gone up hardly anything. Here's pre-pandemic levels where 1.3 million, 1.2 million houses up for sale. And then look at this massive nosedive of active listings. I mean, this is bad, you guys. This is super bad. So it did go up. But this is this is the chart that I'm going to be keeping my eyes on and, and basically adjusting my opinion, okay? So I'm going to be taking a look at that graph. It's going to be in my description. But based on the inventory and based on that specific graph, again, I'm going to continuously tighten up my opinion on the housing market on a potential crash and potential cooling down. But right now, you guys, I mean, we are still under an inventory crisis. According to Fred, we don't have nearly enough inventory 
to start a, a massive shift back into the buyer's market. And that is uh, something to be very concerned about. So not only do we have skyrocketing interest rates, we still have houses that have skyrocketed in equity. So essentially, this is super bad. And here's the real problem, y'all. So I, I probably meet 300 agents a week. I just get out of a couple meetings and a couple of training. I do trainings all over the place. I did one today about appraisal value. And the problem is Houston, it's still not cooled down. I, I think that Houston and in Texas and in parts of Florida, we're going to lag behind the rest of the nation because it's still a really, really bad market right now. People are still overbidding. Uh, and, and there's multiple offer situations. So it's still bad right now as a whole, you guys. Inventory needs to increase. We, we just don't have enough right now. So my overall update as far as inventory, we're still in super bad shape. And if it doesn't go up by, let's say, June to at least double where it's at right now, I, I, may, I may rearrange um, my anticipation as far as when the market will crash and when it's time to buy again. But again, you guys, keep your eye on the inventory. Let me bring it up one more time. Okay, so we're way down here. It did get a little bit better, but what I have been telling people and what I'm anticipating is we're going to start seeing the inventory go up from here. Okay, so I'm anticipating by June, you know, probably I'm hoping to be around right here, about 700,000 uh, active listings. And if that happens, it's, it's, you know, my predictions are probably going to be more accurate. But if that inventory stays low right now, I'm afraid I'm going to have to adjust my opinions and adjust my estimates because, again, you guys, even though with skyrocketing interest rates, even though they're skyrocketing, it's not like they're 10%. So it's not enough to transition the market alone. We're going to need more supplies. That is a fact. And, and listen to what I'm saying very carefully, okay? So I'm going to bring up an article right now that I found. And the reason why I want to bring this article up is I think it's important to give an overall idea of the housing market. For example, my housing market in Houston it's super bad. But I also know that we have one of the highest migration areas and states in the entire nation. So in order for me to properly predict things and share my opinions, I need an overall outlook on the entire nation. So I'm going to bring up an article right now that is essentially going to go into whether or not other areas are seeing a cool down. Because what I can tell you guys is in my area, the rates have absolutely not cooled down the house market enough to where it's not a toxic seller's market. It's still a toxic seller's market. But again, this article is going to go on the nation. Does the nation look like it's cooling down? Take a look at this article from Fortune right now called... The economic shock hitting the housing market is starting to do some damage, okay? Which essentially sounds like super good news. But again, if you're in one of the high migration states, high demand states like I am, we're, I, I believe we're going to lag behind. So it's going to take a little bit of a little bit more time for Houston to, to get back to where it's time to buy again. But take a look at the points that this article is making. Okay, the article says, on the front, the Fed might be having some success. There's mounting evidence that the economic shock caused by spiking mortgage rates, because remember, you guys, they did skyrocket, right? Virtually overnight, it was essentially a rug pull to a lot of people. Not all people, but a lot. Okay, so by spiking mortgage rates is beginning to take some steam out of the housing market. That's good news. We saw a clear shift in the housing market as rates rose to 5% at the end of March. We are hearing about qualification issues, rising cancellations, and increased buyer hesitancy, particularly at entry-level price points in remote location. So you guys, that's super important to know because again, there's markets within markets. So even though my, I, I literally si see almost no signs of my market cooling, it is hopeful to look at the nation and to look at other areas because I am, am essentially saying to people, the housing market crash or slowdown in my eyes is probably going to happen out West in California. I'm from Southern California. I've seen what happens in Southern California. So the fact that there are certain places in Southern California already slowing down, less touring, less online searching, I believe is a good sign of things to come in my area. I think it's going to start out West, maybe even the East Coast, and it's going to spread, right? And, and I think it's going to touch us, unfortunately, last in the high migration states um, because we have so much demand here. And, it, and the problem, you guys, the biggest problem right now that I'm seeing in Texas is the locals can't buy, right? The, the locals, the local Texans can't even make offers right now without being, without an out-of-towner or a cash investor coming in, 
going over asking and offering our all cash. So all of, you know, so if you live in Texas, my heart goes out to you. I know how bad it is here in Texas. You know, as locals, we can't even buy right now. It's too crazy to buy. There's, there's so many people coming into our, our market. It's, it's making it worse and worse. And I have not seen a cool down, but let's continue on with this article. So this is very interesting, you guys. This is how much home prices are up since the onset of the COVID-19 crisis. And you can see here, Texas is similar to California with a you know double-digit equity growth of about 24%. It's interesting that these states, Idaho especially, up to 48% increase. And look at Florida, you guys. Florida is, is in a potentially bigger housing bubble than Texas at a 36% increase in home prices since the onslaught, which is pretty incredible if you think about it. So let's go on and read here. The reason more home buyers are suddenly pushing back at record home prices is pretty straightforward. Soaring mortgage rates are pricing many out of the market. Back in December, the average 30-year fixed rate mortgage was 3.11%. Now many mortgage brokers are quoting borrowers at 5%. That's a bigger deal than it might first appear at. 3.11% rate, a borrower would owe $1,710 per month on a $400,000 mortgage. But if a borrower got a loan at 5%, the payment would now spike to $2,147. So essentially, guys, that's over $400 increase in mortgage payments. So listen to what I'm saying very carefully, okay? I really believe that if you're in the market buying a house right now, you need to be really careful. In fact, I would recommend, especially if you're a first time home buyer, to sit this out because it's in my opinion, even though inflation is still increasing, I believe the dust is going to settle. And the moment, this very second that we start having more inventory surges, the market's going to shift, right? The fact that people are still putting in my own state are still putting fifty, eighty thousand dollars over asking price for six, seven hundred thousand dollar house is shocking to me. Because think about how bad that really is. If someone's putting even fifty thousand dollars over the asking price and fifty thousand dollars over the appraisal, that means they're already starting in their house upside down in equity. Going above the appraisal price is crazy to me. That means the, the house must appreciate to that level before there's any profit or any equity growth. So in other words, you guys, it's very dangerous because essentially it means that if you go on hard financial times, you can't sell. But I want to show you guys uh, essentially my local market and essentially show you how much inventory is now under contract. And I'm also going to show you what new home builds look like. Take a look at this. So you guys here, you know, here's an area I've been looking at a lot It's Kingwood. And as you can see, these are all the homes up for sale. The ones in brown means they're under contract. The ones in greens are homes that are up for sale. These here uh, represent basically new build sites, right? So remember I told you there's a whole bunch around my house. I mean, there's new builds all over the place. Here's what's crazy about these new builds under contract, you guys. Look at this. A lot of them are being rented. So these new builds are being rented out right off the bat. But look at all of these houses here are not even done being built and they're under contract, right? This, I mean, it's astonishing. And this is all over the place. I've been really wanting to find houses up here. These are all new builds, but again, there's nothing available. You know, anything, if, if I go to a new build right now, like even down here, there's a whole bunch of new builds. Not only are they not completed yet, they're way over price per square foot as far as what resells. Look at, this is not even built. And I can tell you guys, that may, depending on where you're at in the nation, for a 3,000 square foot house, 453,000, that may not sound like a lot to you. And that's why so many people are flooding to Texas and flooding to Houston because we're still in an affordable state. So if you're from SoCal and you come here, it's like heaven, right? I'm from SoCal. I came here. I was like, wow, this housing market, I can actually afford to live here. But the problem with those new bills that I just showed you guys is it's about 20% over resale houses. So even, if, even though it's 20% over resale houses, people are so afraid of missing out right now. They're so afraid of inflation not stopping that they're still scooping up these houses at over 20%, in my opinion, of resale houses. And now their mortgage payment may be $500 more than the, when they set out to be. So in other words, you guys, what I am saying right now is everything is still a mess, okay? Okay. The good thing is, is though, we are seeing signs of a cooling down. We're seeing signs of a transition in other areas. But as far as in Texas, it's just is not happening yet. This is my opinion for this week. I still think you need to take a step back, okay? I don't think you need to be out there bidding for houses if you're doing it under fear of missing out or you're essentially going over asking price. I honestly think that one of the worst things that people could do right now as buyers is go over appraisal value or over asking price. 
please don't do that. And, and again, you know, keep an eye on the Fred inventory. I'm saying that from here on out, inventory is only going to get higher. So we're going to be able to track that now with data. We're going to be able to track my opinions with data from here on out. Um, so let's keep it. Let's keep an eye on on those things. You guys, I'll be back for another update next Thursday to take a look at rates. Again, reference uh, the articles in my description below. And I really hope I'm giving you guys data or at least data enough data sources to where you guys can make a decision that is a confident decision, right? So even if you don't want to buy right now and you have to buy, be confident about buying as long as you have that mindset to hold for 10 years and you have a steady income stream. Then, it, then buying right now may you know maybe the thing for you. It's not the thing for me to do right now. I'm renting for many reasons, whether people understand it or not. There's many great reasons and effective reasons why I'm renting. Um, I can buy right now. I can go out and buy a house right now, but I'm choosing not to. I have great credit. I have down payment. I can secure it. I'm a very skilled negotiator, but I'm sitting this one out because it's just way too toxic. And I really believe the inventory is going to shoot up. Demand's going to shoot down. We just have to let more time pass. But again, I don't want to see people out there using their emotions to buy the biggest investment of their life. You guys, uh, that's going to conclude this video. Again, I hope I helped you. If you want to invest in real estate, I wish you luck. And for everyone that's listening, I hope you win.